Hello and welcome back to the Free Play Arcade Podcast, where we're going over the Spring Series. I am here, as always, with Corey Hyden, the president of Free Play. That's me. I am here with Chris Wilson, the winner of virtually every tournament we've ever thrown. Howdy. And also, plug your uh, plug your Twitch channel. Oh, so uh, me and my brother do kind of a retro multiplayer classic console stream on Twitch on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays at 8 o'clock Central. It's twitch.tv forward slash multitap. Mugen, M-U-G-E-N. Good show, seen it, big fan, participated, awesome. Also, we're talking about Billy Mitchell off the camera, and I was saying that I would put my money on Chris Wilson, and he is not, he, he is, would, he would a never, super shy guy. He would guy. never take it. Chris is a super shy guy, right? I would, I would honestly like favor him in a tournament of literally any game against Billy Mitchell I'll say, will you take, will you take so, me up on this? Billy, Billy, I got $100 on Chris Wilson versus Billy Mitchell in literally any video game, arcade game, up to and including Donkey Kong, if you want to take me, I guess. Here, I have a lot more money. <laughs> a Billy, lot more. Billy, email me your terms and let's work this out. <laughs> we will get you here and you will lose. All right, so we were talking Spring Series 2. Chris did not say that he would like you to know. He, he has nothing to do with what we <laughs> no, just he did. Just, he just got, got dropped <laughs> Uh We're talking Spring Series 2. Uh, we already knocked out Mario and MVC 2. And the third game during the second Spring Series, Windjammers. Ah, uh, Windjammers, yes. I do remember the top three of this one. Windjammers. So let's, let's step back. Windjammers is like one of the most loved Neo Geo games of all time and it's it's like uh everyone rates it really really highly um yes. not too many people remember it but those that do really really are into it it still has a big competitive scene even today you right. see tournaments around the world um is is it france that has a big wind yeah. cameras mm-hmm. tournament yeah they do yeah and this was our attempt and it didn't work out very well but we tried to jump start the scene here mm-hmm. um wind jammers is was for a while, kind of a hard MVS card to uh, to find. Now that the prices have gone up, it's pretty easy because as soon as people realized that it was a three or four or five hundred dollar cart, people flooded the market. I think it's dropped back down into the two hundred range, um, but it's a great game, awesome game, uh, lots of replay value. Uh, how would you describe it as a game? I would say it is a fifteen years down the line version of Pong. It, I think it's it's its grandfather is actual Pong. Um, so you have a character on each side. They throw what in this game is, I guess, a frisbee. It's like mm-hmm. it looks like a frisbee golf disc, yeah. and uh, they sort of bat it around. And depending on your timing, you can throw supers. Chris, what would you what would you describe it as? I mean, no, I think that pretty much covers it. It's just upgraded pong, but you also have fighting game special moves in there. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, like like any good Neo Geo game. And right? this introduced me to Windjammers. I had never seen it or heard of it before the Spring Series tournament. So the, the object is you're throwing this disc between one another. Mm-hmm. You have special moves. Each character has their own moves. Um, and it's fast. And it can get it gets faster and faster. Or I guess you can actually do drop shots, make it slow. I mean, it's mm-hmm. like there's strategy to it. Um, and you're trying to just get the disc past the other player, correct? Yes. Is that, yes. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, I believe that or is Or right. land on the ground. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Landing on the ground causes it to give you a point or two as well. Uh, what was your Chris, what was your experience with Windjammers? Uh, so I have played it a lot at, uh, different, like, gaming conventions that we go to, because it's actually really popular among just right. uh, people who play retro games. are like, oh, Windjammers is really fun, mm-hmm. easy to get into, simple controls. So I played a lot of it that way, and we actually have a consoleized MVS and the cart for it. So we had a way to practice, and we played it a bunch before, so... It's actually one of our favorite games. <laughs> it's, it's an awesome game. It's a great one. I, I feel like the Neo Geo games don't get the amount of love that they need because of the the lack of like a, a dedicated cabinet and artwork. Yeah, because, so that's like the hardest you know, thing to do, right? Well, to, tapper, to balance tapper, that. You look at it and oh, it's Tapper. There's a beer. Let's chuck beers. You know, well, Kangaroo, not so much. But like, you get the idea. Like, there, there's there's artwork that that sort of draws you to it. Whereas the Neo Geo, much like the Play Choice Ten, right behind you, you know, it's it's just a generic cabinet. And, and people don't know to seek out wind jammers. I, I think that's what the, the issue is. Well, yeah, so Neo Geo is really hard in the modern arcade format because what I remember is finding like a two-slot Neo Geo at a laundromat or something, and you just play it, and that would mm-hmm. be awesome. 
Um, and then occasionally you wouldn't even realize you're playing a Neo Geo because it would be like a dedicated Metal Slug just with the one slot Neo Geo in there, right. but it had dedicated art for Metal Slug. And then, like, the coolest arcades in the world when I was going to arcades would have either a four or even a six slot Neo Geo. And you'd be like, this is mind blowing. This is amazing. They've got great games and you could switch between them. And the artwork's um, all fantastic on every single one of them. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, in the modern world, it's kind of a tough thing to, because a lot of the people that come to our arcade in particular, um, They'll recognize all of the retro games. They'll see Star Wars. They'll see Mario Brothers. They'll see uh, Pac-Man. Everything, Mm -hmm. they'll be like, I know exactly what that is. They'll see a Neo Geo, and it won't click that that little thing is showing them that that has Metal Slug or King of Fighters. They won't really, that won't really click in their head. They'll kind of go past it and not realize that it's loaded with some of their favorite games. They just don't realize it. Um, And so we've tried to have to play with the the consumer education aspect of that. And that's just another problem. Hard challenge of owning an arcade is yeah i, I need to i need to throw more wind jammers tournaments i i, I should <laughs> well, yeah, we, well we and you know like flip shot is kind of a similar game but also pretty cool um i feel like i feel like we could do a sports monthly i don't know i might be giving myself <laughs> well, yeah, extra yeah, work that i can't you're, handle you're spreading yourself <laughs> even thinner yeah. all right so wind jammers tournament how did it go what do y'all remember about it um, do you, chris you start what do you what do you remember about it i remember the vincent brothers were there so <laughs> <laughs> that that was interesting but were um, they playing uh yeah they were both playing gotcha and uh that would be kevin and joey vince and kevin g- getting placing two or three times in the first spring series tournaments yeah mm-hmm. um, um it's just i mean it was a blur because you just won so no, fast it wasn't, is, that what, is that what happened <laughs> It, it did not. It done, did not appear to be. It a went lot of really effort. quickly. It yeah. went really. It was. Quickly. It was. A, that's a fast game. Um, yeah. And we had taken some steps to make sure that it wasn't a runaway <laughs> length tournament. And then it looks like we could have actually let the rounds go extra long and everything. Because that um, one was single elimination in one match, right? That's possible. Or? That was probably a free tournament. Um, that was yeah. prob- that was possibly one of the ten dollars to get in, and anyone who's in the arcade can enter it. So mm-hmm. a lot of times, and we. I don't think we'll do that anymore um, because we've kind of learned from our mistakes. Um, But we always expect a bunch of extra people because we can make the announcement in the arcade. Hey, you might not be good at this. You might be great at it. You don't know. Enter this tournament and you're already in the arcade. So you're it's free for you to enter at that point. Yeah. Um, So we always plan on probably more people than enter those tournaments. And so we make the rules, make them move really quickly. Yeah. I think that was like a two hour tournament Mm -hmm. really quick. Um, this Chris won. This Chris got second. Yeah, I. Uh, so the week before was my birthday, and the community group had a surprise birthday party. Uh, Chris, you were there at the back half of that, where they took it to free play Arlington. The as of yet to be oh, open yeah, free play yeah, yeah. Arlington. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a contest there, which was to enter the contest, and they had a prize and everything. They did this all surprise as a surprise to me. Uh, Lauren Featherstone tricked me into getting to the arcade, which wasn't hard. Um, <laughs> The, the contest was beat me at any game that you chose. And uh, I wasn't prepared because I didn't know I was <laughs> going to be in a tournament, right? And everybody like figured out very quickly, um, even though it's only like 10 days away, that Chris doesn't know how to play Windjammers. So I was a constant victim of people just burying me at Windjammers. Um, and then uh, after that, like I had a week to learn the game. And so I learned it the best I could in the typical fashion. You know, I'm practicing on Wednesday. Uh, I had learned that that we had some very good players in the group who had much experience with Windjammers, so I thought, well, this is one of those ones where I'm toast, and uh, I didn't really consider much of it. I actually had to listen to Josh explain the rules of Windjammers that day, like because he was going into like the nuance of like how you do defense and and whatnot, and I am at rapt attention trying to learn the game on the fly. And I got second. I second place finish. I have no idea how I got that set. Just the second. instincts took over. Um, Doug Galt, uh, active member of our community group, mm-hmm. um, big arcade fan, it pulls third, which is awesome. It's the first time he's ever placed uh, as we've gone through these. Uh, Noble Ray hit, hit us up with some really strong beers that day. Mm-hmm. Um, we were trying to get the crowd really into it. <laughs> uh, it was pretty successful. It's just it's such a nuanced crowd that plays that game that we just didn't quite make that connection to get everyone there that should that's, have been that's, there that's the thing you you want to you want to get everybody because it's such an accessible game like we had a lot of you know really good gamers show up for that and play really good general gamers uh like chris said the the vincent brothers showed up you know everybody who's anybody showed up except 
everybody who was nobody didn't want to play. And, and I, that always is disheartening to me personally because I, it is my passion to spread games to people who have no idea what these are and, and they've never t- played them before. It really, really brings me more joy than winning a tournament is, is just introducing someone to a game and then having them be like, wow, this is really kind of fun. Right. And, you know, they win a round or two or they don't and they have a f- good time. And, you know, uh, Shannon Stevens, we talked about in the previous episode um, in her, her balloon fight obsession, like I... I worked with her to teach her the game in seconds, and and it clicked with her, and it was you know we still talk to each other about it. it was, it's 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 magical, and and no one really tried when jammers who didn't had didn't know what it was before. Right, and kind of interesting in the background here during this second spring series, we were going through absolute permit hell in our Arlington build hmm. uh, for free play Arlington. Um, and you just kind of talked about stopping by the Arlington Arcade. We were doing certain special events, preview events. This arcade was ready mm-hmm. to get people into it and to play games. And it sat that way for two months. And it was probably, it's one of the most stressful times of my life. And so it's really interesting going over the spring series because in many ways it happened in such a blur for me. Um, because my mind was totally in Arlington, totally trying to get that up and running. I mean, looking at that last tournament was on like April 9th. Mm-hmm. Um that's less than three weeks from Arlington opening. Um, and it, Arlington was this massive endeavor, right? That's an 8,000 square foot arcade that now has 130 games. Insane lineup. I mean, it's insane to just think about. Um, and it, it really kind of shows how impressive I think that we've grown. We threw this tournament series and in the background, all of the higher level people at free play, they're not even like able to process or think about it. And it was really great to have the team come together. And I mean, in many ways you were already working for free play and I, I see your, your job announcement coming up in Facebook cause I'm going through the timeline. Uh-huh. Um, and it was like, I mean, the community came together to really make the second spring series happen. And that was really amazing. Um, all right. So we, we did win jammers. Now we get to what I will continue to say no matter what, is my favorite, and it is in fact the best fighting game ever. Garu is an awesome fighting game. I mean, it might not be the awesome best, but game. it is a really, really good game. Um, in many ways, it's approachable, but there's enough depth there to really hook the the hardcore fighters. Um, if it was a bigger game, a bigger name, uh, it could be just in the the halls of the great fighters, both in terms of popularity and in terms of quality, because it's got the quality. It's yeah. just. Uh, getting people to play it and this was my attempt to just say guys more people need to play this game because it's it's that good especially in that generation it is so so good everyone else was going in a certain direction and the guys that put garu together were just like we're gonna stick to what worked we're gonna polish it and perfect it and build it just a great game yeah uh king of fighters is is a collection of all these neo geo fighting games brought together all the characters all the styles into one game and so you get a game with just a zillion characters you have i promised myself i wouldn't say a zillion this podcast (laughs) count my zillions um three characters and one team you have like 40 or 50 in every single game it's 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 so much to look at and to process and yet you know the game is beautiful it's amazing i'm talking about king of fighters all of them um the the combos the character designs that they're all amazing and then garu what garu basically is is a single player version of king of fighters you know, it's got all that polish of all those years of fighting games, and and in many way, in many times, the characters themselves. Terry Bogard is in the game. Um, it is a it is a King of Fighters game. It even says King of Fighters tournament in there, but it's single player, uh, single character at a time, right? And it's 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 beautiful in a way that that ST is. You know, it's 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 one character. You can visualize it. It's got beautiful artwork. I I am in. You introduced me to that game as well. And I am in complete agreement with you. It is a very, very good game. Uh, Chris, you're uh, second place in Garu. Chris, what do you think of Garu? Uh, it's all right. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I really, really like it. And my first experience was, again, on the Dreamcast, which apparently that version of the game isn't so great. But even there, right. I was able to tell. It's like, yeah, this game, it's like great graphics, great music. That's the thing the, is the art in that game yeah. is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that, that came across in the Dreamcast version as well. And like I don't, this isn't completely true, but it almost feels like the third strike for SNK as far as uh, like the animation's really good. You've mm-hmm. got the just defend mechanic that kind of works like parrying. It's just 
and it feels really solid just like third strike so well yeah that is kind of i mean garu was the perfection of the neo geo Mm -hmm. fighter like it, it it was everything that had been learned everything that worked put together and just maxed out the capabilities of the system without pushing it too far so you had these gorgeous gorgeous graphics with none of the delays that some of those Neo Geo games would get, none of the lag, it's just flawless. Uh, I'll never understand how they did so much with the Neo Geo system. It's well, 15 yeah, years later, they're yeah, still they, just cranking out these yeah, this unbelievable was, games. This was probably, yeah, the Neo Geo probably was like 13 years old at this point. Um, and they just kept pushing it forward, kept maxing it out. All right, so um, Arthur Williams wins the tournament. Yes. Uh, he. Is something at versus? What is he at versus I here in Dallas? You know? I, he does work. I at believe he's like the owner. No, he's not the owner. Co-owner. I think he's. I think he's. he's, well, he's a, a manager. I, well, I think. I think. I think a lot of. I think they have like four or five people that have different shares in the oh, company. Oh, okay. And yeah. if anyone at versus hears this and wants to correct me, feel free. Because I know yeah. Mike Manick is involved. Arthur's involved. Um, and a number of people are involved. And I think yeah, he also runs their tournaments quite a bit right yes he does um, he runs their tournaments he runs their streams he's an excellent uh general fighting game player but he's an excellent specific garu he player. loves garu he <laughs> loves garu <laughs> garu is his game um and he came he it was pretty much most people thought he didn't have winning the tournament he did win the tournament yes. um which was great chris got second uh third place does anyone remember not me Gregory Rogers. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. I saw him the other day. Yeah, um, another solid player. Um, yeah, a, a player who should come out and play with us more. Yeah, Gregory, come find us. He's Greg. he's a, a, a top tier fighting game player. Agreed. Um, he 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 sells himself short and thinks he can't compete. He he's great. Yeah, and so that was. I mean, that was a su- successful tournament. Uh, again, it was us trying to reach, try to bring in people for a game that we knew it was awesome. We knew it would work as a tournament, and it worked great as a tournament, obviously, mm-hmm. but. Um, still didn't quite get that outside pull um, that we had prayed for, we'd hoped for, that we really wanted to. Because Garu, being my favorite fighting game maybe of all time, I would love it if everyone played it every single day, and that was it. Um, I, I would play. It's, it's <laughs> really good. Um, it's it's worth your time. So um, we're not done with Garu yet. Uh, I know you've done you featured it in a few Tuesday night fights, mm-hmm. um, and it always has a decent turnout. Yeah. And no, several people players who play fell in love it, with it love it. Yeah. yeah. So that was event number four in the second spring series. Congrats on second, Chris. Oh, thank you. And does anyone now event number five? I will remember forever. Does anyone remember what game it was for five? Was it Tetris? It was. Oh my god, Tetris. <laughs> okay, so I let me set the backdrop here. The Tetris community is insane. Um, they love Tetris. Mm-hmm. They love. I mean, and they get into huge, epic fights over. Uh, Atari Tetris versus Nintendo Tetris and which one's preferable and which, and you know the world championships are on Nintendo Tetris but some people think that that's nonsense and then other people think um, Atari Tetris is what everyone should play I don't at that level of Tetris it starts to kind of just all meld together in my mind like watching the play everything like that is, is insane um, so we were hosting a high dollar Tetris tournament we'd originally announced this as a $1,000 tournament and then we found out that the world championships were only awarding fifteen hundred dollars, so we very tactfully <laughs> changed our prize to fifteen hundred and one dollars, um, and then announced that we had the world's largest Tetris tournament and the richest that had ever existed. Uh, the world championship people took it in pretty good stride. Mm-hmm. The actual Tetris players somehow they were the ones that got mad about it all. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, the people who host the world championships, they thought, wow, that's pretty funny. Um, they just they were happy that Tetris was getting attention and right. there was money being thrown at the game. The players thought it was the biggest insult that had ever happened to the world. <laughs> and we, in fact, had a couple players insist on not showing up um, just because of how we behaved or how we acted. So, Tetris, do you remember this tournament and how it went? Yes. All right, so we did it on Atari Tetris. Um, we had two machines and... Uh, this was kind of a controversial choice we made, and it was probably the wrong choice. One of our machines was the running brand new IL sticks with a brand new um, revamped monitor and everything. The other was an actual original Atari Tetris on the actual cabinet that was... It, it, there's complications whether or not it's a dedicated cabinet or not, but this was the cabinet that was made in the Atari factory for Tetris running those original sticks. Um, 
The original sticks, the way they use the actuators, was just not as clean as the new ones. So very quickly, we realized, wow, there's going to be a preferred cab. And we did try to make all of the big matches on the preferred cap, but we also tried to make everyone also play on both. Mm-hmm. Um, and we tried to be fair. And it was probably a mistake to even include that original Atari cab um, once we realized the kind of attention the tournament was getting. But, you know, we're also purists, and I have issues balancing that sometimes. Like, it, being able to put that level of cabinet, something that's really rare, really appealed to me in this tournament, maybe the wrong choice. What do you think? You know, as a, as a tournament player... When it, when it comes to actually playing the game, I, I am here to win the tournament on whatever the rules are. So, I knew what was coming. The get the both the machines were on the floor the week prior. So That's my right. Wednesday practice session included those machines and those sticks. So I was good to go and ready for whatever. Um, yeah, I was just focused on my competition at that point, which was you know I knew Chris had the the arcade record. Honestly, when I when I thought about that tournament, it was just like. Chris has the arcade record. It's going to come down to me and him unless a Tetris Pro shows up, in which case we're both toast. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Chris, really quick, weigh in for me on your opinion on the Atari versus Nintendo Tetris debate. Um, well, I'm more of a fan of the Nintendo one. I guess I'll get that out of the way, but I'm not diehard either way. And I still think the Atari game's very playable. And it's, you know, well, there was some concern from you when it first came up that the tournament was going to go on too long. Yes. And it actually, I mean, I think it speeds up enough near the end, at least on those hardest settings that you had it configured on. That. Right. We, we, I think we were on the next to hardest um, mm-hmm. setting. And uh, I, and in many ways, I kind of, I see the the argument for the Nintendo because the way the Atari Tetris handles those later stages isn't nearly as good as the yeah. way Nintendo does. Like the early stuff, I even, I kind of prefer the Atari, the way it's playing, the music, the whole ambiance. And, but those later stages on the Atari, it's just like really, really good players are all finishing within like a fraction of each other because it mm-hmm. gets so hard. Whereas the mm-hmm. Nintendo, you really get to stretch your legs as yeah. a player. Well, my... my- my concern with that tournament going into it was, um, you know, you know the 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 pro did come out. Ed Bradburn is unbelievable at Tetris. Un, I mean, so good. He he could he could break the world record, the the existing world record on Atari Tetris whenever he desires. Um, he is that good. I have seen him just go until he's bored and stop. Um, so that's, that means he was going to win period. The moment he showed up, the moment he started playing, I knew he was going to win. He wasn't confident he was going to win. And I was like, sorry, Ed, you're (laughs) winning and you will barely break a sweat. Um, well, we also, we had like, I was concerned about multiple Ed showing up to be honest with you, because they exist. Well, that's what four world-class Tetris players show up and they can all play Atari Tetris and can all, you know, get over the fact that, that this is the richest Tetris tournament in the world, <laughs> uh, then that could have gone on for well, a long, long, long we time. We had four players show up who were hardcore Tetris fans. It mm-hmm. just turned out they weren't as good as they expected to be. Right. Um, because this was... We had more sore losers in this tournament than any tournament we've ever hosted. Um, <laughs> yep. We had a one-star review from a tournament. We've never had bad reviews on like Facebook come from a tournament except for this one. And it was a guy who said... And I don't even remember. I think he might have been the guy who got third place. Do you have... So I'm checking on Facebook. We don't actually have the rankings um, of what happened in this tournament. Do you remember? It was not the guy who got third place because I certainly remember who got third place. Um, who? Third third place got was Michael Beltran. Was it really? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So so what happened was... Let's get back. Let's, let's table the bad review and we'll okay. tell the story of Michael Beltran in Tetris because this is ridiculous. I was in the bracket with Ed which meant I was toast. It did not matter how good I did. I already knew this. So I was just waiting for my killing at the hands of Ed. On the other side of the bracket, um, Chris, you were also in my bracket, so you were toast as well. Um, On the other side of the bracket, we had the Jerry and Michael Beltran and I guess some good Tetris players who were salty about yes. the fact that they couldn't yeah, so play ra- Tetris. Ra- but, random brackets, man. Um, but uh, but I, I, rem- I remember we all got these Atari art books for being in the in the, the semifinals. And I, and I stood there with Michael Beltran and the Jerry, and I was like, look, I'm toast. Done. But whoever wins that match between you two, 
and we're all holding books, is winning money. And at the time, Michael Beltran is like, got a hot date who's trying oh, to call him away. right. And like, you need to leave right now. And I'm like, Mike, you can leave right now, but if you beat the Jerry, then you're winning money. And and I'm sure Jerry, and Jerry's just super, he's like the Joker. He's always laughing at everything. He's he's happy go lucky. He doesn't care whether he shows up or not, or whether he, he does or not. And so he 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 calls his 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 lady and says, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this one more match. Match beats the Jerry, and then immediately withdraws from the tournament. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now I remember having to stand in the middle of the arcade and guilt Michael Beltran as much as I possibly could about leaving a tournament early. Now he had no chance um, yeah. going much further. Um, no, whoever whoever Ed met, Radburn was Ed was going right. to be vaporized. So um, he his, his, his only chance would really be to get second, right. going against Chris Wilson. And me and Mike right. both knew how what his chances actually oh, right. were so, against Chris Wilson. Yeah, clearly one bracket had it much easier. <laughs> one, one side had it much easier. And so Beltran, um, you know, luck boxes his way to a nice third place prize. He leaves and he goes on his date. Uh, I assume he's not dating that girl anymore, so it wasn't worth it. But you know, live and learn. Hey, he won. He won some money, and he did get third he won place. Some money. Um, he had, he's popped up in a, quite a few little finals. So I mean, finishes. Yeah, so yeah. money is money. Um, all right. So our finals were Chris Wilson and and Ed. And Ed. Yeah, yeah. So so it Chris was a pretty played, exciting finals. Chris played that correctly. awkward fourth place fourth slash third place match where like you couldn't you beltran's gone right so whoever wins this match is automatically is, is automatically gonna get second right and whoever loses this match is out right um that's pretty intense i kind of like that yeah yeah not, like i mean not that michael beltran did anything right but that does add a layer of excitement having <laughs> having a match where it's either no money or you're in the finals yeah uh, that's pretty awesome so um ed bradburn ends up winning uh, Ed Bradburn just recently you did the Ed Bradburn versus the world on Tetris right yeah well I mean he's so good that there's no one who's going to beat him and Chris put up a fantastic it was an effort. awesome finals right? it went it went like an hour it, it just kept going and it, going and going it was a tr- I think it was a 15 minute match which on Atari Tetris is long like, yeah it's an intense long battle um, if you can, if you can hang in there, and Chris was the one who could, yeah, just hang in. He and just hang kept pushing it. It was, I mean, it was really exciting. He like, made it earn it. Like everyone was, you know, we had the the people that were allegedly good who left all irritated for whatever reason, and then the people who watched that finals. It was really exciting for them. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, I mean, there weren't that many exciting matches in the Tetris tournament, um, but that particular match it got the crowd to pay attention and everyone was really excited to see how it all uh turned out um but yeah tetris as a tournament was really interesting because it was one of those tournaments where when the people lost that thought they they were good they just left there was no like they were not going to be sportsmen and hang out watch it maybe play some other games or anything they left and they were mad um we got it because we made a big joke. We made constant jokes about being the biggest ever by one dollar and everything. Right. And uh, there was a one star review that said, "I purposely threw a dollar on the ground that w- I was going to spend it free play. I don't think it's the biggest tournament ever." Or like it was that angry, and um, you know, and there were no specific really complaints. The only, I mean, I noticed that the cabinets. We probably should have changed that so that they were identical. But um, other than that, there weren't any legitimate complaints. It was just. People were really mad that they lost. And Chris Wilson is good at games. If you've been watching this podcast, you will know that he wins or gets second well, or gets third in although, everything. Who so knows? Who knows? He smoked some people. How many people got ruined by that bracket? That sounds like brutal. That's that's true. That's I mean, true. But everybody had a chance. It was double elimination. They well, had a chance in the losers bracket. And random, and, and, random brackets are random, right? Um, and, and there's a beauty. There's a beauty to that. Like, I mean, there's a beauty to Michael Beltran getting third place in a. Tetris tournament that included, you know, some top players, right. some really good players. That's awesome. No, he 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 earned his way through the bracket. Um and and Chris put everybody to sleep that that went up against him in the loser's bracket. And there's that, that was a perfectly legitimate uh tournament in my eyes. Um you did st- skip over the third pa- place match. You would have toasted Beltran. <laughs> Beltran. You would have We don't know. We don't know. Him. We don't know. No, you, I, what was um the the Jerry versus Beltran match was pretty entertaining. Um, 
Because Daryl laughs at everything. Right. Those, those, like, I can't even remember. It was like a well, seven, he, he, seven minute match or eight minute, but it was still pretty interesting and pretty exciting. And he joined on a lark too. <laughs> right. He was just like, I'm here. Might as well. Um, it was, it was, it was a, it was a fun, entertaining tournament for me. Um, I liked watching Chris just continue to, cause he upped his game and oh, I, I've never seen you play Tetris. Was, was awesome. I've never seen you play <clears throat> Tetris as well as you did that day. And Ed is super nice. Um, you know, he was not one of the, the Tetris players right. who was, who was angry. Like you were saying, he never was not from the get go. Mm-hmm. You know, he had a good attitude about it. He's one of the best Tetris players in the world. He'll sell himself short, but he's amazing. <laughs> Well, that was the the beauty to him winning was there were a lot of Tetris players that were expected to win the whole thing. And he was not he was just like, I don't know, guys, I'm not really so sure if I can win this thing. Yeah. And then he just he did. Yeah. It was awesome. And uh, the 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 puzzle night, Ed Bradburn versus the world. We hooked him up. Uh, it was him against literally everybody in the arcade with one credit combined. And I was prepared for the possibility that you would come out as well, Chris, um, because I, I just felt like he could. Even combined, he could take us all. Because, you know, it wasn't like you didn't put up a great fight. You did. You went, it went on and on and on and on and on. And Ed just kept going. And so that sure sure enough well, was he, the way it was. We, we went through everybody in the arcade that night. And he beat them all in one credit. And he continued to go on the left side. And then we all went again. And he was still winning. And we went a third time. And he was still going. And he beat <laughs> us all times three. Yeah, he's become much better over, like, I mean, he was amazing then. But he's upped his game even more. On the Atari Tetris? I mean, yeah, Atari he can, he can Tetris. Have it, he can he, have the world record right. whenever he wants it. Exactly. Um, all right, so that was Tetris. We're not done with Tetris forever, uh-huh. but we're definitely taking at least a year off <laughs> from Tetris. We'll revisit it. Um, maybe we'll come up with some cheesy, you have to play both Nintendo and Atari Tetris, and it's the true world championships that no one will come to play, and Ed Radburn will win. <laughs> and who knows what we'll do next year. But... The next event, the last event in Spring Series 2, Super Turbo. Super and Turbo. as you kind of saw in Super Turbo from year to one to this year, um, even though there were some pretty major events happening across in the world related directly to Super Turbo on the same weekend as this second um, week six in this second Spring Series, we still started to see some pretty serious players show up with a two thousand dollar prize pool. Some of the top American players started to at least take notice. Yes, and yeah. either either if they were in the country, a lot of them had left the country to go to a Japanese tournament at that time. They all took notice, and the ones that left were left behind that stayed behind did indeed come out, even if they didn't say they were coming out until they just showed up. Um, so we had we had Ultra Combo in from California, and we had Rizwan without without even mentioning it, just sort of show up that day. And uh, we had a, another podcast where we went over this this quite a bit, but right. it was a fantastic day. Well, yeah, and, and for purposes of time and general sanity, we are not going to spend a ton of time talking about Super Turbo as we go through the third because we have had a whole podcast on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was kind of a special, this was kind of a our first real stamp on the Super Turbo world. Um, we started, we had notice from ST Revival, um, we had all sorts of really awesome. So, kind of tell me where uh, you, Rizwan and Ultra Combo where they fall in the twer- terms of top American players. Um, Ultra Combo is is very young for a Super Turbo player. I think he's 22, 23 now. Um, he grew up on HD Remix, where oh, you okay. first, first were first exposed to the game. Um, he is maybe the most talented player in North America. Um, he is capable of beating any of the Japanese players at any given time, and he did it out in Boston. He he took out Aniken, um, and right. I remember uh, staying in the same room with him the night before, where he like he was just going over match footage and just worrying about Aniken. That's all he cared about was was he going to win that match, and he won that match. And then he lost later to Afro Legends, who had just come out of retirement <laughs> because someone had tossed in five thousand dollars into a uh, a Super Turbo tournament. So he's out of retirement trying to practice up. And um, so, so Ultra Combo is his first name Sebastian. Yes, that's okay, Sebastian. I'm, I'm just making because sure, we didn't. Have, I didn't write. Right. This is this is how new okay. we were at this. I didn't write their. Yeah. I wrote their real names. And, Riz, and Rizwan, it, he, goes, he always goes by a variant of Rizwan. So right. Rizwan, Rizwan, it, it's always Rizwan something. Okay, so our first Super Turbo that we talked about in the last podcast, it was a scrappy DFW tournament where all the players from DFW came. We yeah, got a couple lot. couple. People drinking heavily from Houston right. showed up. <laughs> I mean, it was a ton of fun. It, yeah. it was, um, I mean, 
it was a massive turnout. We were super pleased. It was an awesome tournament. It was exciting. It was everything that you could want. Mm-hmm. Um, but then this one kind of brought it's as we start to bring out those serious super turbo players, mm-hmm. we started to realize, wow, there's still a community in this super turbo world. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's they're very supportive of their game. They love their game. And I guess uh, I don't even think I was there for this tournament. So y'all have to walk. Not. Y'all have to walk me through this. How did it go? Not not so well for Chris. Chris Chris had trouble. Something happened that, that kept him from the venue. So he he was late arriving, which impacted his play. Um, so he he lost first round, which and and to be honest, he lost off off to the side. We had two machines. Right. That one wasn't recorded. I I, don't, I still don't know what happened in that match. Um, I know who you lost too, but that's about it. Um, it was my last day as a non free play employee, so right. I was just doing my best. Uh, I can't even remember who knocked me out. Um, <laughs> well, and let's see. This was May 2nd, which means Arlington had actually been open for about six days um, at this point. So the our entire world was everywhere. Like mm-hmm. we were um, – but really exciting I, to see these players come in. I remember we, we missed you greatly. Like we, we that was that was sort of the elephant in the room. This is just we wish – because you had just – Two thousand dollars is an unheard of amount. Oh wait, I just been punched in the face. Correct. Oh no! Like the day before. No, I mean, it I was remember. the elephant in the room, and 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 we wanted you there because it was it was a celebration and something amazing had happened where Rizwan just shows up. We had surprise guests. We had people oh, flying in from man. all over the country. Yes. It was a fantastic communal experience. It, like you said, it was our first time really getting the national ST scene into free play. They were discovering it for, for, for the first time. Um, you know, they were putting on a show. Um. Yeah, we missed you. We I, really did. Yeah. So I totally forgot why I wasn't there. I I, I thought you might have not wanted to bring it up. It was a terrible event. <laughs> All right. So um, the two days after the Tetris tournament, during just before our pre soft opening at our Arlington location, I was randomly assaulted and had my jaw broken. Yes. Um, bizarre happening. Broke my jaw in like five pieces. I've got pins all in here. Um, insane. Insane stuff. Jaw was wired shut. And at this exact point, I was still way hopped up on medication. Still like an early recovery from surgery. So yeah, I missed the event and I couldn't even remember why. Um, obviously, I'm healed ish. Uh, it t- takes forever for your jaw to actually like fuse back. Gotcha. But you look back, you look like yourself. You sound I can like talk yourself. again. Yeah. No, yeah. it was uh, talking like that for a month was, or no, it was more than that. It was like six weeks. It was tough. It was yeah. miserable. Um, and you had just done the Tetris tournament. You had just bagged on Beltran for leaving. Uh, like it was such a such a wonderful like scene. Your your part in it. So we really missed you that tournament. That's a bummer. Um. So the tournament's happening. You're late. Yeah. <laughs> Chris is his mind's on his new job. Right. Well, it, I mean, I'm trying my best. But <laughs> once again, like the, there's the class is so classy. It's so good, and it's it's an honor to play with these players. It, it I wouldn't have missed it for the world. So this was, um, and I it, was much improved, by the way. I, I really worked on my ST game, so I was ready to well, go. That's, but that's what's kind of interesting, right? Like ST, the total skill level as we've kind of built the local community and as the national community is taking notice of us, has kind of just collectively just gone up like crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, now locally, uh, you know, our players are competitive on the national scene. We're we're still new. Right, but yeah, well, but two years ago, it wasn't the case at all. Yeah, uh, I think uh, someone tried to compile a list of the top 50 players in in, uh, in the United States based on tournament results from the previous year, and three players who locally play, well, four if you count Nate, who drives in, drives in all the time, but three players who are, are home here in Dallas, whom are not Chris Wilson, ranked in the top 50. And, That's and awesome. Chris has won multiple money tournaments in Super Turbo in free play. So we have a huge scene. Well, and, and we're all new. The great thing about Super Turbo is, too, I mean, clearly it's a game where the best players are ultimately going to get to the top of the tournament. But there's still a lot of variance. Um, there's a there's not a ton of health, right? Nope. There's a lot of stuff that can happen that can throw you off. Um, That's true. You, now, you're always it, one touch from something and, amazing happening. And it, it gets completely like beyond my understanding i'm sure at the super high levels i because watching some of the tournament footage that i've been researching for our upcoming huge tournament um you can definitely tell that there's a whole nother level of the mm-hmm. game that i don't know but 
it's just it's such an exciting. That's what, what's really great is just watching those uh, matches and knowing that there's something above it happening doesn't take away from it at all because it's all right there on the screen. They're characters that you know everyone in the world basically has grown up with. Yeah. I mean Chun Li and Ryu, everyone knows who that is. Like right. you could go to probably any kid in high school. Years, year, you weren't even born when these characters were announced, and I bet they probably can identify them, um, or at least what game they're from, or you know. I can. Some right. <laughs> um, okay, so we get into the tournament. Uh, this is our first tournament running Sanwa Sticks uh, through yes. demand of the community. Um, we were able to. Re- so I was holding on still to the big blues, mm-hmm. um, but we were able to fit and retro engineer into the big blues these um, Sanwa JLF the standards, and I think in some ways improve upon them. Um, in ways that can't be done in the candy cabs. It's interesting because whenever somebody plays on those sticks that you custom made for the big blue, um, and then they play the the candy cab, which has come in, you know, more recently, you know, even the pros that come in, they're like, we really prefer the candy cab. However, those you should put those sticks <laughs> right. from there into this one because they're the best we've ever felt before. Yeah, it's it's tough because there's a you know our heart and soul went into making those for the big blues. And they're not standard sticks, mm-hmm. um, but they play great. They're wonderful. They do. And they, they endure, right? They're really durable. And that's true. We have not had to replace nearly the amount of parts that we've had to on the same, or, or, well, similar sticks that you have to put into the candy cabs that don't, we can't use the same modifications because they literally don't fit mm-hmm. into the smaller candy cabs. Um, so, yep. Uh, I mean, we'll uh, fit. We- kudos for, for, for <laughs> custom engineering. <laughs> it's too Maybe bad. the greatest. It's, Super turbo stick of all it's time. It's too bad we couldn't convert right. everyone. But um, the candy cabs are fun. Big Blue's fun. This was on the Big Blue. We had um, the same setup that we have right now. Um, San Juan sticks, American buttons, and it it's kind of a unique play now. Like I like going between the Big Blue's and the candies. Like, I like how sturdy it is. Like it's it's totally like I I kind of like how we at least kept some of the Americanness of the Big Blue. Um, we cleaned up the stick issue by doing what we did, but it still feels a little different, and I kind of like that. Um, I kind of like being able to hold on to that. So we're going into the tournament. Rizwan's there. Yes. Ultra Combo's there. Yeah. How did that go down? I assume, uh, those were the top two. Everybody yeah. assumed that, that Ultra Combo would win. Um, there was a famous video with El Treble, who later came in, uh, Eugene Lin, to, uh, to play with us for 24 straight hours. And he he described it as free. talking about free money, Eugene. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, he talked. He he called it free money and said that Ultra Combo was going to take the free money, and uh, so everybody had anticipated him winning. He certainly showed up. He was there. Um, he showed up day of, and then and then Rizwan showed up, and I just saw the, the look in his face, and he just said, "That guy's the best. He's going to win." And that was that was Rizwan walking in, and so he was he he fulfilled that prophecy. And Rizwan was a uh, just a consummate professional super were, turbo player and, and there were some amazing matches late in that uh nick Wynn, who was uh friends with jack fam the the aforementioned second place of uh the first in the Spring original series. Yeah. yes uh he came out and put on a clinic his his ryu play is still inspiring to me today um he played against H- hakudo the the japanese i'm sorry the mexican claw player <laughs> who drove all the way from tijuana uh that day and um, I take that back. He drove. He took a bus. It was the previous year's King of Fighters '96 right. player who went from who Mexico drove. City and drove. But uh, so bus from Tijuana that day showed up, um, and he's playing Claw, an infamous character in Super Turbo, diving off the walls. There's nothing you can do against it. Well, Nick has this technique, and I believe Damn Die does it as well, if you're familiar. Um, and it's it's he presses towards the wall that the Claw jumps off. Then he does a quarter circle forward. Then he holds down all six buttons and lets go of them all like it's a piano. And depending on what Claw does, it's either going to block, uppercut, or reversal Tatsu. And he does this all within one frame of a timing, like one frame timing. It all happens, and he counters it over and over again. These guys have an epic match in the semifinals. And it's just the most amazing Super Turbo I've ever seen. Well, and that's, I mean, that's... And that was the semifinals. Yeah, that's the beauty (laughs) of the game, right? Um, So, the two most known, probably best players end up taking first, second. Mm -hmm. Um, Who do you remember who got third? Yes, it was. It was indeed Hakuto. Raul Delgado is his actual name. That is it. Yeah. (laughs) I don't have any other name. So, yeah. Um... (laughs) 
It was a, and, it, and Nick got fourth. That it was, was a match. it was a totally different um, Super Turbo World that year. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, of course, we are going into the Super Turbo Tournament for this Spring Series mm-hmm. with four of the best players in the entire world coming from Japan. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I've I've carefully researched this. There are elite, there are articles about all of the, all four of the Japanese players who are coming in from Japan that we're flying in that have called them the best. Yeah, there, there's there's a there's a particular um, web page. Nate has showed it to me several times. That it has two Japanese players listed as the gods of this character, mm. and we have four four players whom are on that page. So Matsun, the Ken player, um, Yaya, the Sagat player, um, Orochan, the Chunli player from Osaka, and uh, most recently Murasaki the dictator player who's considered one of the two best ever and maybe the best ever. Well, and Orochan just won the tournament you were at. Correct? Yeah, in Boston. In he Boston. won that one walking away. And after he won that, in pretty awesome manner, declared himself the greatest ever. Yeah. And, he said, and he said he was taking all challengers. He's awesome. And what's really cool is now he gets to come to Arlington, Texas. Well, and his his brother got knocked off by by um, Ultra Combo, who got second in this this so, previous spring series, and won the qualifier. Or sorry, got third in the qualifier, so he's coming out here. Ultra Combo will be here. Yes. Let's do the quick list just for fun. Okay, so it's, it's insane. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Matt from Japan. You have Matsun, Yaya, the Sagat player, uh, Orochan, and Murasaki, the Dictator player. Um, from the LA uh, regional qualifier, we have um, Tomo from Japan, moonlighting at UCLA. He's the number one qualifier. Afro Legends out of retirement. He's coming. Uh, Ultra Combo. He qualified as well. Uh, from Canada, we have Lord Jimmy Bones from Montreal. Uh, Thello, who was in the Evo uh, Tournament of Legends. Um, he, 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 I believe he got top six in it's a few evos i may be wrong about that um a honda player also from montreal charithi i don't know how to pronounce his name um also from montreal a street fighter 5 pro uh moonlighting and then you from the new york uh qualifier you had e to the ng whom no one had heard of coming into that and was fantastic uh, he was winning in casuals all the time technical monkey uh, the nation's greatest Chun Li player. Yeah. I don't know who else will you would put in that category. Right. I, I don't think anyone m- matches up with him. Um, and then uh, Josh C, Josh Cooper, the Claw player, uh, all from New York. And I didn't even mention Rizwan, who's going to bring himself in. Rizwan, yeah, he won the tournament, and he's. Uh, I guess he like moved in between the qualifiers or something. Just right. missed both. Um, right. Yeah. During during between be here. LA and New York, he went to he moved to San Francisco. So, um, insane, insane. Lineup. And that's just the people who qualify. Right. That and yeah, we, we're gonna have all of our local players. Mm-hmm. I I know you'll be there. Um, it's gonna be awesome. It will. It will be awesome. It's so, gonna be a great day. All right. All right. Two days. Yeah, a two-day tournament in Arlington, so, <laughs> Texas, with an after party and five Japanese players. Yeah, so, so Boston, you know, we were we were out at lunch with with or dinner with Otachan after that tournament, and Ultra Combo had beaten his brother Aniken in the tournament, and he pointed to him and he said, "You play like Yaya." Nice. And now Yaya is going to be there. We're going to have the best Sagat player in the world, the best Sagat player in the country, and. Michael Beltran likes to play Sagat. <laughs> um, we're gonna have the best, you know, dictator player in the world. We're gonna have the the best dictator player in the country in Rizwan, and we're gonna have the dictator player who won the first series right there. Um, we're gonna have uh, the best Ken player in the world. We're gonna have the best um, Chun Li player in the world. We're gonna have the best Chun Li player in the country in Technical Monkey, and we're gonna have. Rob, who has won tournaments here right. as Chun Li as well, so we're there's a lot of like that's awesome character greatness here, and that it'll be our biggest tournament ever. Um, we're really excited about it, and it's just it. I can't even really understand that that's happening in Arlington, Texas. Um, so that brings us that concludes Spring Series two, and we were just talking about Spring Series three. We're gonna briefly just kind of talk about what we have coming up, um, and. Uh, that'll be that'll conclude it. So big kind of thing that happened this year. We gained another sponsor, okay. another large sponsor. We actually we have 
a ton of help from a ton of people and I don't want to, you know, minimize what they're doing. And that list includes, you know, Capcom and um, Focus Attack, really awesome companies that have helped us um, and that have provided various different things for us. But our two main sponsors this year, we have a soda sponsor, and that's not even really soda. Mr. Brown Coffee has fallen <laughs> in love with Street Fighter 2 at Free Play. Welcome. And they wanted nothing more than to um, get more and more involved. And this is it. They're sponsoring the entire Spring Series as the soda sponsor. Um, they've shipped us something like 2,000 or 3,000 servings of Mr. Brown just for us to, like, give away or do different bargains, super specials on, all sorts of crazy stuff. Let's pretend it's only 2,000 that they <laughs> right. shipped and I did not drink 1,000 1, myself. 1,000 fell off the truck. Um, so, yeah, Mr. Brown keeps all of Team Free Play going, mm-hmm. um, which is not even, like, a, a silly sponsor thing for me to say. It's actually true. <laughs> yes, that's correct. We, um... We found Mr. Brown and then kind of it just turned into a match made in heaven, which it's, you know, um, it's interesting how it all works out. We're really excited to have them. I'm hoping uh, one of their reps is able to make it. Uh, It's quite a flight to come here, Um, but they're trying and we'll see how it all shakes down. And then we have our beer sponsor back again. Noble Ray Mm -hmm. supported us year one, a three month old arcade Um, went along with a massive arcade tournament series when that wasn't even a thing that doesn't even exist and we were just like we're gonna do this and it they, still doesn't if you're watching this come out and enjoy this right seriously I, it, we work really really hard to throw awesome events um the spring series is something that's pretty magical and uh even if you're not good at games you should come out and just check it out check out the environment play some games while you're there maybe see some cool stuff happen during the tournament get into it and uh maybe next year compete or just compete this year lose and it's fun it is it's, a ton of fun I, I have been bounced in the first round of multiple tournaments and it is still fun it's fun to play these people it's fun to meet these people it's fun to see the games you know when when you lose in a tournament someone has beaten you and and you got to play them and you got to like see how they they play against you and 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 you gain a rooting interest like seeing how far that person goes and it's it's always this guy beat me in the first super turbo tournament and i watched him go on to win the whole thing like it's 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 a, so much fun to actually be there and actually compete even if you're terrible at the game and just see where it all goes it's so much fun so it yeah and it's no one's ever i mean it's it's a community that we have right mm-hmm. and everyone is just really trying it's it's so exciting to get better at games and one of the best ways is through the spring series you get to play players that you won't necessarily always see at the arcade I'll see um, you all on Wednesday, the day before, the week before each of these tournaments. <laughs> so the first tournament, we had a surprise in this spring series, a surprise week zero tournament that we just announced officially today, mm-hmm. unofficially yesterday. Um, we've teamed up with our friends at Alamo Drafthouse um, and it's still being also being sponsored by Mr. Brown Coffee and Noble Ray to throw the most insane ready player one tournament ever. Mm-hmm. Um, March 18th. Week zero, that's the week before the big Super Turbo tournament. Um, we're doing it at Richardson. It's a multi-game event. You have four minutes on Black Tiger, Tempest, and Pac-Man. Um, the top four from each of those games then goes to a single elimination bracket on the style of tournament that you won in the year one. Yeah, the Joust Deathmatch. Joust Deathmatch. Death mm-hmm. um, and the ultimate winner gets $300 plus a private screening of Ready Player One for you and 30 of your best friends. <laughs> it's going to be great. They're giving us a theater. I mean, they're giving the winner a theater right. um, uh, to just do whatever they want with and watch Ready Player One, bring who they want. It. I mean, you could win this thing and take a date and blow their the, your date's mind. You could just have the theater <laughs> right. all just yourself. Just you and your date. I mean, think about it. There's, 30 empty seats. The opportunities are just like limitless. I yeah. mean, you could have a blowout party. It's going to be um, really awesome. Second place is going to take home $150 plus a sweet swag pack that's going to include some of the Ready Player One stuff that's being released just at theaters since we've teamed up with Alamo Draft House. And third place is 50, plus some also really cool swag. Um, I, I think this tournament format is going to help out um, point-pressing players who, who normally get shortchanged in the Spring Series anyway right. because it's a four-minute timed run this, this, to even this qualify. This should appeal to yeah the people who have mastered the high scores. Yeah. Um, and it should be able to get them into that joust deathmatch when it becomes any, anyone's games yeah and if you've never played any of these games before i don't know how you managed to not play pac-man before but uh black tiger no one's played it before so 
So yeah, Black Tiger, we will release the week. I mean, Black Tiger is an awesome game. Um, That's awesome. We have, I think we've had it at both Let's Plays, not us, but the community has brought it out to the Let's Play Gaming, Mm -hmm. (coughs) or at least one of them. Uh, And it is, it's a really cool platformer. Um, It's Ernest Klein who wrote Ready Player One. It's his favorite all-time game. Um, So he took the opportunity of writing a book to make it a major plot point in his book. Um, Will it be a major plot point in the movie? Uh, We don't know, Um, but we're making this true Book will, book authentic tournament. Will the movie involve arcade games? Well, yeah, we, the trailer hasn't really uh, <laughs> unclear. Eh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But for now, we're celebrating that amazing source material that has those arcades. Um, and yeah, it's it's open to anyone. It's fifteen dollars to enter. That's a, an amazing price. Set. That includes your arcade entry. So. Right. You also get to come into the arcade. It's just five dollars more than we normally charge to right. come into the arcade. You can play all the games, participate in the tournament. Um, I've spoken with Alamo. I've spoken with our sponsors. I've secured more swag per person than we've ever had before um, in a tournament, which we give away a ton of stuff during these tournaments anyways. So this is going to be a fun one. It's at Freeplay Richardson. Um, we're running a special version of Pac-Man called Electric Cowboy, um, which is my all-time favorite version of Pac-Man. And I thought if we're going to have to run a slow Pac-Man, which is how it was made, right? right. Pac-Man was originally just that slow game. We were going to do something a little interesting. It changes up. It makes it less likely to run a perfect game right. of, in the four minutes. Cause yeah, because four minutes of perfect Pac-Man. <laughs> it's not that hard. Yeah. Um, it's learnable easy. So that's going to be exciting. Hopefully uh, we get a nice attendance. I'm hoping we reach some people that we don't normally reach with being partnered with Alamo, having them out there promoting it. What's um, the date on that? March 18th. So we we're go. eight days from the recording of this. Probably <laughs> it'll be cu- if you're watching this, it might have already happened. Right. Um, but it, we'll do a follow up on it. It's going to be a, an awesome tournament. Um, and then the next one is the Super Turbo. Yeah. Monster $5,000 prize pool. More than $10,000 spent flying players in. It's going to be on killer awesome versus city cabinets that are rebuilt from the ground up. Um, it is one of the biggest super turbo tournaments of all time yes um it is the culmination of the super turbo community building and it's going to be really interesting to see where we go from here um do we get the amazing response that we're hoping for does everything come come together and it make it so that we can do this year after year maybe do our spot are our sponsors as happy with the turnout as we will be will they enjoy it we don't know that's this is a big test so we're really hopeful that the community comes out and if nothing else gets a once in a lifetime opportunity to play against some of these players yeah um, come come play with us because these are the best who have ever played and like i'm gonna sit down and play a match against some of the japanese players it's so much fun i did it in in in, in japan obviously but uh, in boston as well and it's so fun to just sit sit across from a japanese player and and feel them shake the machine and and right. give it your best and Win or lose. I mean, th- that is J- Japan is where they have perfected the art of Super Turbo, right? <laughs> you get to play against people who, yeah, they they just they might as well have created the character. They're so well, yeah. It's they've been because Super Turbo never died there. It's been played what, continuously at a high level since it came out. And, and play Matsun, fi- find Matsun and play his Ken because I swear it's like he's inventing combos as he goes along. It did. He's pl- he's playing Marvel vs. Capcom on Super Turbo, and I'm not sure how he's doing it. As he's flying away, hitting you with combos. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, you can. See, there's some pretty cool videos. Of, it's insane. <laughs> he's ridiculous. Um, so we're not going to go into too much detail. We've got an mm-hmm. after party Saturday night. DJ drink specials. I mean, we're going to do everything we can and make it a spectacle. That's what I specialize in, right? Right. I'm a spectacle machine, and <clears throat> given what uh, every I know, we have some local players who are giving hotel rooms in the area just so that they can deal with the aftermath. <laughs> right, it's it's gonna be interesting. We're gonna make potentially make Chris drive a shuttle back and forth. We're gonna rent him a big passenger van. We don't know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be crazy. Um, but we've done podcasts on it. There's more. On, we, there's a Facebook event page that's been live. Go check it out. Um, okay, week two technically. It's the third game, but it's week two because the first week's kind of a bonus event. The Ready Player One Easter April April Fool's Day. Pac Man Battle Royale Japanese version, a tournament. On that, four people at a time. Chris is still working on building the bracket system for that. Um, I, I, I've got it down. We're going to do double elimination. No, we're going to do sort of double elimination. We're going to go all down, all the way down to two. It'll be a four-player game at the end. The top two players will move on. 
and then we'll completely reset the bracket, completely redo the tournament again, because it's one on one on one on one, it goes very quickly, and then the top two from that one will go on to the grand grand final of a, a one on one on one on one grand final. So Pac-Man Battle Royale is actually our rarest game in North America. Mm -hmm. um, because it's the Japanese release. We've not been able to source this anywhere else. They've made all sorts of ROM hacks, modifications, but the code that's in our game, we can't find anywhere else um, because the Japanese version was a total failure in Japan. Right, couldn't find it in Japan either. Why it ever came, why this particular machine ever came to America, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We were at a Japanese-themed arcade yesterday. They had a bunch of American versions <laughs> of it because it's so hard to find, um, and it... Uh, universally, the reviews are it plays a little bit better. It's mm -hmm. a little bit more authentic Pac-Man experience. Doesn't necessarily lend itself to tournaments very easily because it never declares a winner. Right. Um, but I, I figured a way around. But that. it's going to be really exciting, really interesting. What are your first? What? How? How much has your head exploded when you heard that's one of the Spring Series games? I think it's pretty exciting because that's something that even though it is a different version that people see it like. Dave and Buster's or whatnot. It's something that a lot of people have experience with. So I think that has big potential to draw in a lot of people. They're like, oh, Pac-Man Battle Royale. I've played that before. So And that is our free tournament. $10 arcade admission gets you into the tournament too. $500 prize pool. Um, everybody listening to my voice has played Pac-Man before. We all know the rules. <laughs> right. And yeah, and the, the Battle Royale twist is great. It's even better in the Japanese version. And it Hopefully this will be one where we get a million players to show up because it's exciting. All sorts of random stuff can happen. Anyone can actually win. I mean, there's skill involved. There's mm -hmm. the best players are probably going to rise to the top, but it's also there's also good chances that the best players could get knocked out by I mean, cuz technically, if you think about the strategy, three players could gang up on one. There's nothing that we can do to stop that. Right, that's correct. That's totally within it's the rules. Awesome. It's awesome. I would gonna recommend be it. May if you see anybody at this table in your bracket, it's going to be run them over. Um, so that's awesome. So week three, fourth game though, yes. uh, probably could have done better <laughs> with our week numbers, but Rampart, all time classic arcade game, trackballs, three player version, the dedicated cabinet at free play Richardson. Um, and if you've ever spent at a minute playing Rampart, you've spent six hours playing Rampart. It yes. takes over your life as soon as you game. touched it and it is addictive and it is brutally competitive. It, it's one of the origin games of the tower defense genre. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah, it combines puzzle, shooter, strategy game, mm -hmm. um, everything. And it's just, and it's constant thinking about what you're doing. Like, it, it's just, it, it's unlike anything else I've ever played. Chris, do you have any experience with Rampart? Unfortunately, I don't. But, I mean, it's always looked pretty interesting. <laughs> That's called sandbagging. Don't trust me. <laughs> um, You've all been hustled. Yeah, go, go play it. You're going to like it. I <laughs> yeah, promise. Yeah, it's, 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 there was a night one time um, where we were closing the arcade, and there were three people still there. And I was like, let's go play Rampart. And I don't even remember the next six hours. <laughs> it's so good. And I was like, oh my God, I have to go. Like, well, I, this we, is a this is a problem. We did a puzzle night on it. It has puzzle elements. Right. We had a, the, the announcer of that game sounds like Bane. We had someone pretending to be Bane from uh, Dark Knight Rises <laughs> and, and commentating the game. Uh, and it was it was one of the most hype, enjoyable puzzle nights we've ever had. So it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody who's attended, including the people who have never played before because it's just one of those games. It's magic. Yeah, and we'll probably run sometime during the Spring Series some kind of test preliminary event that you can qualify into the tournament just to get more people to play. So good. Uh, because that's that's the key. It looks kind of weird. It's kind of a complicated game at first. Um, so, But once you play it, you're stuck. It is That will dominate your life. Um, all right, so I'm really nervous about week one, which is the Super Turbo Monster. But mm -hmm. the next tournament is actually probably what I'm most nervous about. Week four, Street Fighter Three Third Strike. $1,000 on the line. This is the first time we've ever run a big money third strike tournament. Mm -hmm. It has a good community. Yes. Um, but this is kind of the test. Like, I feel like this is the same as year one a little bit with Super Turbo. Um, will the community all show up? Will they make this? Because year one Super Turbo, we thought 40 people were going to show We sold 40 tickets. We were ecstatic. Then they filled the entire bracket. We sold it out at 64 players on that Super Turbo. This is third strike. We're going to have one machine. We're running it very similar to the... It's in a big blue. Right. Um, 
We're going to run it just like that first year Super Turbo Tournament and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, You've been around the Third Strike community. What do you think is going to happen? You think it's going to be big? I think I think the third strike community will support it. I think they will show up in numbers. Um, I suspect Crystal. I, I've seen I've seen him win a tournament before in third strike, so he can play. Um, I, I think they will show up. Uh, the the casual gamer. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a Street Fighter game. We all know the characters. It's a beautiful game. Uh, we we compared it to Garu earlier. Um, I. I don't well, know. I mean, it's the, I it's the perfection of Street Fighter it's 3, great. right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Street Fighter 3 culminated in Third Strike. and It's third... the only one that anyone plays. It's, right. It's, it's like Super Turbo. It just, you know, you don't even play another version of it. it that's Street Fighter 3. It's Street Fighter well, 3 Third Strike. The only reason you buy other versions of Street Fighter 3 is to use the parts for Third Strike. Right. Like, it's insane. <laughs> no one likes anything else that's not Third Strike. And you can see why if you go play the other versions. Yeah. Third Strike was great. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a great Street Fighter. Um so yeah, we got a thousand dollars on the line, twenty dollars to enter. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I hope it's big. Like I'm really nervous about it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I I hope so too. Um, I I think they'll show up though. I really do. They they've been supportive of Tuesday Night Fights Third Strike to the point where I can't get rid of it. So I think they're showing up. And I feel like the Austin community for Third Strike. That's true. Really I will big, get in so. contact with them, and some yeah. of them are coming out for ST, so they will know. So yeah, I mean, a thousand dollars on the line—that's a good starting prize pool. That's the exact same prize pool we started with Super Turbo. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, all most of the time our prize pools are ridiculous compared to a lot of tournaments. Just yeah, because, I don't know how many Third op- Strike tournaments have a thousand dollar prize pool. Right. I don't well, know. Any, yeah, I operate any. in a a different world, right? I go to sponsors and I pitch stuff, and I'm just like, I want money because yeah. I want to pitch the biggest number. Um, right, and then I, and then I go to to people nationally, and I'm like, we're doing a tournament. It's a thousand dollars on ST, and they're like, you're lying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I have video of somebody winning it last year. No, it's, you're still lying. It's interesting making a name, right? <laughs> All right, so then we go to the one I'm the least nervous about: NBA Jam Tournament Edition. We're doing a doubles right so it's yeah. two on two two v two, two. V two. um every so you team- have to find a partner chris can you find anybody who can play a game with you <laughs> i'll look i'll look around, <laughs> look around. Maybe, <laughs> maybe even in this building <laughs> holding auditions at uh twitch.tv <laughs> slash so multi-tap mugen there you go it's only 25 per team so it's 1250 right. each to get in that's just a small amount over our normal charge to come many of us arcade. have played this game before uh yeah you have a league going right we now we do have a our own league playing so we're hoping most of the league shows up but we're also hoping that this kind of reaches a big demographic that we've been missing in our tournament series which is these 90s sports games blitz and jam were crushing the they were mo- games they were so monstrous good. and there are plenty of people who played them a ton back in the day who hopefully they can see something like this and it sparks something that they want to get back into it. They want to play it some more. Yeah. Um. And, and come join our league and everything. Yeah. We we have a we have a a very small scene in comparison to what was for NBA Jam. Everybody played right. that game back in the there day. There were national championships with a hundred thousand dollar prize pools. Um. NBA Jam was a. I mean, Shaquille O'Neal what traveled with an NBA Jam machine. That's correct. <laughs> he wanted it in his hotel room every city he stayed in. Michael Jordan had it commissioned to him him put back into right. the game they, they couldn't get his license because he had opted out of the nba players agreement to, right he was not uh, a member of the union right so then he had himself programmed into it so that he could play as himself yeah and midway did it because of course it's yeah. michael jordan yeah. right you can have the game oh, absolutely yeah. that was the biggest disappointment in jam every time it, it was as a kid in the 90s you'd be like all right sweet i'm gonna play as jordan and pippen and then it was pippen and you know bj armstrong <laughs> other people um, Ku coach in, in right. tournament edition since that's the game. so um that should be cool that should be really fun and um, and it will have more balance because jordan is not in it right um yeah so what team is like op in nba jam there 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 isn't one is like, it is it pretty balanced yeah it's, i it's, don't really know um, i mean i've played so, NBA jam a bunch i know the mavericks i never so was never I, good as the mavericks so i, 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 I will still. say this the the creator mark termo he's from D- detroit um, born in the, in the area, <laughs> he's a huge Pistons fan. Uh, you can absolutely see the Bad Boys Pistons 
uh, influence on that game <laughs> with them shoving everyone around in the game. And uh, the Pistons are unusually good in that game. Right. The, the team wasn't so good when the when the game was coming they, out. They were fading, for sure. Um, and also, if you if you play the Pistons and you get matched up with one of their division rivals, like, say, oh, the Bulls, uh, <laughs> the Bulls might find themselves missing all their shots at the very end. So That's there's, amazing. There's a, there's a little Easter egg that you can't get around if you're playing the Pistons. That's amazing. So, yeah, I'm I really would, excited about that. I wouldn't say that. the Pistons are the best team in the game, though. I think we're going to have a good turnout. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And more than anything, what we're trying to find is a good balance between these insane series events, Super Turbo, and then fun, NBA Jam, Rampart. Um, And this is just, this is a totally experimenting year. um, Because we we experimented a lot in the first year. Then we went a little safe the second year. We're back to experimenting. We're trying to bring in some new games, some new blood, see what see what happens. The the league has really glommed on to the two v two format. The teams, it's a lot of fun to play with a partner. Um, well, and if yeah. that's discouraging you, uh, find me, Chris Delp, on Facebook, facebook.com dot slash machine k u m a c h i n e. I will happily take your uh, your request for a partner and and find you one right. because we it's can, a fun game to f- play. Well, and and we we consider doing singles, right? One v one. You might too. Chris at freeplayinc.com. I will find you an NBA Jam partner. I'm really excited to see if anyone hits you up on that. Because people get scared, right? People don't. It's it's just that first step getting into something is, okay. is, is a lot harder than you'd think. Um, but, yeah, we considered 1v1. But then it brings in the computer element. And, obviously, the true top players have kind of negated the computer element and right. can use it to their advantage and all of that. But... The, the cat, mid-level the, the, players, right. the computer dominates. We used to call it the Super Pippin right. uh, uh, principle back in the day because everybody would pick Rodman because he has colorful hair. Uh, this was an NBA hang time. And uh, and Pippin would just go off as the computer would just dunk on everybody. And uh, that's not a possibility in 2v2. So, 2v2, exciting, fun. And then the grand finale, Mario Brothers Deathmatch. It's back. It's never going anywhere. I love it so much. Um, it's, I think it's going to be an awesome event. Uh, how does it feel not being able to participate this year? I just, I like, I mean, we talked about it a little bit for a second, but just now when we got to that event, it made me realize, is it going to be weird? Uh, it'll, it'll be weird, but I, I've, I love introducing these games to people. It is a passion. I love competing too. Um, so I'll, I'll miss just, you know, the, the excitement of, of, being in the bracket and how am I going to do? Um, but I'm going to go through the same routine. I'm going to practice like I'm playing. I'm going to be there available for players on Wednesday if they want to come out and, and practice. So whoever takes me up on that, I'm going to have a rooting interest. So it's it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm not going to I as the as a person running the bracket, I, I am I'm going to run it straight up. There's going to be random brackets for Mario Brothers and whatnot. But uh, it it'll be good. And I I'm not too dismayed over not being able to compete in Mario Brothers Deathmatch. And and honestly, I've, I've had another uh, several tournaments that I haven't competed in. So, Some, sometimes when you're the gorilla in the tournament, also, it's, it's well, not like, as fun. Yeah, so taking you out of the NBA Jam is a good exactly. thing. Exactly. That's yeah, a great I, thing. I, 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 mean, I, you... I hate... I, I, I regret putting myself. I, I put up a poll before I put myself in the league, and I instantly regretted because they are all like, "Yeah, play, play." And then the moment I did not try very hard and thrash someone 112 to 15. Right. I I, I regretted my decision. So I guess the uh, the obvious favorites are in the building right now for the Mario death match. Um, yeah, well, not me. So yeah, yeah, they are in you. the building. They are in the building. <laughs> That'll be interesting. But anyone watching this, that's more than that's almost two months away. Yeah. So from this time, and it'll be still a good period of time when this goes live. There's plenty of time to get good at it. Oh, There's yeah. a lot of variance. All it takes is enough good players in the way that to throw every, the whole brackets could go anywhere. I could, I could teach anybody this game in a week. So Chris Delp is going to have his whole fleet of pro Mario Brothers players showing up. I will. I'll, uh, I'll have I'll have some competition for, you're gonna make for sure Mr. Sa- Wilson. Sarah shows up this year. Yeah, we'll get we'll get we'll get Sarah in there. Uh, not sure how much <laughs> she will invest in Noble Ray. During yeah. the, this tournament, but we'll see. I mean, maybe she'll switch to Mr. Brown, really get maybe. amped yeah, up, yeah. get excited. Um, all maybe right. you could borrow uh, someone's Rey Mysterio mask and <laughs> wear that <laughs> out of the tournament. I don't know. Yeah, we we've, we've been trying to figure out ways to get Chris, <laughs> Chris involved, but we'll um we'll have to figure it all out. We need to get like true Mission Impossible style makeup so you can just turn into someone else and then <laughs> oh, pull, yes, then yes. pull it off and be like, ha ha ha, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and, but, uh, and it'll be like, ha ha, I'm Chris Delp. And then I'll pull it off again. Ha ha, I'm actually Chris Wilson. <laughs> nice. Well, we can actually pull something off here. We can talk about that. We're actually out of time. Um, but that is where we're going with this spring series. There's more information, freeplayinc.com slash sales. Um, all tickets as of yesterday are were secretly live. They're all officially live today. You can buy tickets to any of the events there. And as always, check out the community group. Uh, do we have a... Uh, freeplayhof.com is the easiest way to get straight to the Facebook group. You can search Freeplay Arcade Community Group. That's a mouthful. Freeplayhof.com gets you straight there. And thank you, Chris Wilson, for being here today. If you want to do a quick plug uh, one more time. Yeah, so I don't know if you can even see the shirt, but <laughs> it's a multi-tap classic console showcase, and the URL is twitch.tv forward slash multi-tap mugen. And for that, that is the end of this Free Play Podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.